Welcome to the world of Munster. Go home, a 1966 movie filled with laughter, surprises, and even a touch of sadness. As you watch, keep your eyes peeled for the funny, shocking, and sometimes tear-jerking moments ahead. Do you have a cherished memory associated with this film? Or perhaps you found a favorite character amidst the array of roles portrayed. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So sit back, relax, and get ready for an unforgettable journey with Munster Go Home. Imagine yourself back in 1966 when a film called Munster Go Home hit theaters. People were thrilled to see their favorite spooky family from a popular TV series called The Munsters on the big screen for the first time. The Munsters was a show about a strange but lovable family living in a place called Mockingbird Heights. There was Herman, who was like Frankenstein's monster, Lily, his wife, who was a vampire, Grandpa, who was a quirky vampire inventor, Marilyn, their niece, and Eddie, their son, who was a werewolf. Together, they made up a weird but wonderful household that made people laugh. Munster, Go Home, was special because it brought these beloved characters to a bigger audience. The movie follows the Munster family as they inherit an estate in England and travel there to claim it. Along the way, they run into all sorts of funny situations. So great was not just its funny moments, but also its nostalgic feel. It captured the vibe of the 1960s while keeping the timeless charm of the Munster family. In many ways, Munster, go home, showed the fun and unusual side of the 1960s. It was a time of trying new things and being different, and the Munsters fit right in. So, whether you've been a fan of the Munsters for a long time or are just discovering them now, Munster, go home, offers a fun journey filled with laughs, love, and a few spooky surprises. In the movie, Munster, go home, the drag you like car stands out with its unique modification, featuring a real coffin. Despite its distinctive elements, the film didn't perform well at the box office. This led Paramount to change its plans, shelving the idea of a theatrical version of Get Smart and instead releasing it as a three-part serial titled A Man Called Smart. The transition from the black and white television series The Munsters to a color movie was marked by a significant shift in the character's attire. The bold outfits, especially Butch Patrick's bright purple suit, took center stage. Interestingly, Patrick's suit in the movie was a departure from his character's usual gray mushroom-colored attire on the show. Overall, despite its unique features and colorful presentation, Munster, Go Home, faced challenges at the box office and influenced subsequent decisions in the film industry. The film Munster, Go Home, utilizes stock footage of the American passenger ocean liner, the SS United States, near the end of her active career for the transatlantic crossing. The transition from the television series to the big screen occurred after the show was canceled due to being overshadowed by Batman. Cast and crew learned of the cancellation just before filming began, following a week hiatus after the second season. The film aimed to introduce the series globally before negotiating future syndication rights. Despite initial challenges, the revival of Family Feud in 1988 faced hurdles as producer Mark Goodson initially resisted bringing back the original host. After Goodson's passing in December 1992, his son took over the show, attempting to boost declining ratings by replacing the host in 1994. These decisions ultimately shaped the trajectory of both productions. In Munster, Go Home, the fictional town of Shroudshire, where Munster Hall is situated, is a playful nod to Shropshire, located approximately 46 miles to the W&W of Birmingham. The movie features Yvonne DiCarlo alongside John Carradine in six films, including The Ten Commandments and two episodes of the Munsters series. DiCarlo, an actress and dancer, played a pivotal role in mentoring Patrick, who portrayed Eddie Munster in the Munsters series. Patrick's television debut was alongside DiCarlo, and he appeared in all 71 episodes as her son. In the 1966 movie, Munster, Go Home, Butch Patrick disappointed fans by revealing that the scenes set in England were actually shot on a studio lot. The character Herman Munster, portrayed by Fred Gwynn, earned recognition as one of TV Guide's 50 greatest TV dads of all time. However, upon his death, discrepancies arose about Al Lewis' true birth date and birthplace. Lewis, who played Grandpa Munster, may have altered his age to fit the role as he was younger than Yvonne DiCarlo, who played his daughter. While he claimed to be born in Walcott, NY, records suggest he may have been born in Brooklyn. These revelations cast doubt on much of Lewis' early life claims, leaving many aspects unverifiable and possibly false. 
In a 2010 interview for the Archive of American Television, a cast member mentioned the first date with his future wife Gretchen was on Good Friday at his home. He cooked beef wellington, asparagus, and an avocado salad. He noticed she was pushing her food around her plate and much later found out she didn't eat foods that began with an A. In the movie, John Carradine plays a character named Cruikshank. Carradine also appeared on The Munsters, playing a completely different character named Mr. Gateman. The original Munsters house on Universal's backlot has gone through various changes, but it now looks more like its most recent variation as the main house in Avic's Desperate Housewives. The house's first appearance was in Bud Abbott and Lou Costello Meet the Invisible Man. The movie Munster, Go Home, from 1966 has a unique place in entertainment history. It was featured on The Gong Show in 1976, one of its first appearances. Before its release, there were plans for a collaboration titled Easy Come, Easy Go, which unfortunately got canceled due to a car accident during shooting. This accident left one of the main actors, Jan Barry, with severe brain damage and paralysis. Interestingly, this project could have marked the screen debut of Mel Brooks, who was set to star in it. In a 1975 interview with Canadian TV columnist James Bauden, there was a discussion about the movie, adding more historical value to it. These connections and interviews provide insight into the film's broader context and its connections to other notable figures in the entertainment industry. The missed opportunity of Easy Come, Easy Go shows how unpredictable filmmaking can be and the different paths it could have taken for those involved. Overall, Munster Go Home is not just a movie from 1966, but a significant piece of entertainment history that intersects with other projects and personalities. Its appearance on The Gong Show and the almost realized collaboration offer a unique perspective on Hollywood's past. In late December 1966, alongside Norman Wisdom's Press for Time, a movie called Munster, Go Home, hit theaters in the United Kingdom. However, not all cinemas screened it, some opted for, and now Miguel. Despite being a chance to see the Munsters in color instead of their usual black and white format from the 1964 TV series, the movie didn't do well commercially. Ivan DiCarlo, who starred in the film, was featured in the Vancouver Sun's Countdown to Canada's 150th Birthday in an article by Stephen Hume titled Canada 150 Ivan DiCarlo, A Leading Lady in Golden Age of Cinema, published on March 7, 2017. The movie marked a transition for the Munsters from television to the big screen, but faced challenges in finding success in theaters. Munster, Go Home is a film released in the mid-1960s. It features Yvonne DiCarlo, who had previously supported Barry M. Goldwater's campaign for U.S. presidency against Lyndon B. Johnson. DiCarlo gained recognition for her role in Gigi, winning a Golden Globe despite not receiving an Oscar nomination for the performance. Initially, Gene Reynolds, director of the Munsters series, was slated to direct this film. However, due to disagreements with the director of photography, Reynolds was replaced by Earl Bellamy after only a short stint. The movie had a tight shooting schedule of 18 to 25 days, making efficiency crucial. Despite its challenges, Munster Go Home remains notable for its cast and the era in which it was produced.